Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome back. First event of 2023 for the Power BI User Group Italy. We are uh, back after uh, two months of holidays, so I hope uh, everyone is fine and well. Uh, um, today, as you probably have noticed, I'm speaking in English because uh, this is an English language event. We are an Italian community, but sometimes we invite international guests or we just decide to do event in English so that they can be shared with the with the international community that follows up, follows us uh, and today is one of those events. Um, for those of you who are new, uh, maybe who we are, we are the Italian Power BI user group as the slide says. Uh, we are a user group, a community that uh, focuses on, uh, on BI, on, uh, especially on, uh, on Power BI. Uh, but more in general, for those of you who follow us, uh, uh, you know that we we try to cover broadly all the topics related to business intelligence, to data, data warehouses, and so on. Um, we, we do events on these topics on average every two weeks, so please follow us on our socials so that you can be up to date with all the events that we organize, uh, webinars, roundtables, also video pills in Italian for uh, beginners, for learners, and so on. So now let's get uh, to business because the number of uh, participants is getting higher. So I had to buy a little bit of time. Um, what we are doing today. Today the event is uh, Power BI APIs and why they never work by Victor Rivas. Uh, Victor is a friend and is also a member of the community. So I'm really happy that he's here and we hope that uh, uh, more people will decide to follow his example from the community and uh, come to share their knowledge with us uh, uh, with us in this kind of events, uh, either a webinar, a round table and so on. So thank you, Victor, for uh, for being here. Um, let's jump to the, through the presentation. Victor is a co-founder at Evergrow BI and is also a former Microsoft uh, Power BI support engineer. So he's here today to share his experience as both BI consultant and the support engineer for Power BI on the topic of uh, uh, Power BI APIs. Uh, together uh, uh, from the Power BI as a group uh, uh, organization, let's say there's myself and there is Ricardo, who is in the background for uh, producing this, uh, this webinar. And we thank him because he's always present to these events because he's the only one with a team's license that can support these kind of events. So thank you, Ricardo. Uh, the user group, uh, you, can, uh, you can find all the slides and demos that uh, Victor will uh, make available in the user group repository. Our socials, as usual, you can follow us on LinkedIn for general announcements, for uh, staying up to date with our events. Uh, we post everything that we do on LinkedIn, so if you follow us there, you will make sure that uh, you don't miss anything. Uh, we have YouTube where we mm, upload our recorded webinars and this is one of those webinars so this webinar will be uploaded on our youtube channel but we also have uh, video pills on uh, many different different topics especially useful for beginners in italian language so if you are an international guest either you learn italian or you can't watch the the video pills unfortunately and we also have meet up for uh, for for events so can you you can also follow us there all the events are also posted on meetup we have also a Telegram channel. We started using it lately. Uh, we think it is very useful because it allows to share all our content and especially the webinars with uh, much more uh, freedom and ease than LinkedIn. So we will keep posting everything on LinkedIn, but uh, we think that the Telegram channel is also a very good uh, way to, to be up to date. So you can subscribe, you can search for us on Telegram. It's very easy. Um, to find the, the, the to find the group uh, it's a channel it's not a group so there is no chat no spam uh, no anything just announcements and uh, most importantly the links to all the webinars and roundtable we do so if you subscribe before every event you will get uh, the link uh, to join and it will be much easier for you to manage uh, to manage uh, what is next? Uh, what is happening next for the user group? Uh, on the 16th of February which I think will be a Thursday uh, we will have uh, Matthias Petersen from Denmark uh, with a session on uh, webinar on Power BI data marts. Um, I highly recommend uh, to attend the session by Matthias because uh, I was uh, uh, I could uh, see it live at the data side. 
in Parma SQL Saturday. I don't know how they're called right now. In, uh, in Parma. Uh, Data Saturday. Data Saturday in Parma a few months ago. And it was a really, really interesting event. Matthias is an amazing presenter, so please join and follow us. And on the 23rd of February, which I think is another Thursday, we will have a round table just for Italian, uh, for the Italian community. So we will speak in Italian uh, and we will test together the DAX, uh, the feature, the new feature of Power BI that generates DAX from natural language. Uh, I will prepare something for the for the round table so that we can uh, talk over some examples, some tests and so on, but it's a round table. So I will bring uh, a few examples, but we hope everyone will participate and uh, bring their own opinions and so on. Uh, yes, it's very similar to chat GPT and all the stuff that uh, right now about uh, writing code using an assistant uh, and so on so it might be interesting for uh, for someone um, as usual we invite you to contribute to to the community if you want uh, like victor is doing like matthias will do in a couple of weeks uh, like i will do the week after uh, we in any way you want. So we know that there are a lot of uh, highly skilled people in our audience. Uh, if you want, you can do a webinar. So one hour session with demo and everything else prepared, the slides, the recording and so on. If you want to just, uh, as I will do in a month, test a feature, uh, share some findings, share some examples with the community, we have the round table. So also uh, open mic, uh, more like a forum kind of format. Uh, if you don't want uh, to be video live in front of other people, you can just record uh, something. We post it on our YouTube channel, we post it on all our channels, and uh, this is also a way to help. So uh, uh, anything uh, that you want to do to, to share your knowledge with us uh, will, be, will be great for everyone. So that's it uh, with the usual uh, introductory deck of slides, uh, and I leave the, the room to Victor for the presentation. All right, thank you so much, Alessandro. I will start sharing my screen. Let me see, let me know if you can see. Yeah, yes. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about Power BI REST API and why it seems that they never work. Sometimes we get 400 or 403 error forbidden and we don't know what is going on. So we think that we set the right permissions, right? But the APIs are not working. And from my experience in Microsoft, there were so many cases where the problem lied just on the permissions. The agenda of today is going to be first, why to use these APIs? What can we obtain from those Power BI REST APIs? Then we're going to move to how to interrogate them. Spoiler alert, there are three ways. Uh, one easier than the other. We are gonna we are gonna start from the simplest one, and then we are gonna move to the more complex scenario. And for that, of course, I already prepared a demo. So we're gonna be doing it together. We're gonna be using Azure Power BI Desktop Power BI Service and Postman. And then one that we saw the demo, we're gonna be able to talk about service principal and master user. Because if I start talking about that at the beginning, maybe we won't be able to understand what, it, what are the differences. So first the demo and then the explanation between service principal and master user. And finally, there, is, there are some extra points depending on the time. Uh, we'll see what we can wait from the future. So who am I? I'm Victor, I'm Victor Rivas. I live here currently in Italy. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Evergrow BI and uh, we have a website if you want to check it out evergrowbi.com as simple as that. I'm an ex-Microsoft. I'm used to work as a support engineer for Power BI so I solve cases, technical cases like this one of uh, APIs. I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer for 2022 and this year uh, Scrum Master and also the Power BI certification. So let's go directly to the um, to what I'm going to be explaining today. So first of all, why should we bother using the REST APIs? What can we get from them? So with the APIs, we can set 
different options in the admin portal, right, from Power BI service. But we can also download the Power BI desktop file, so the PBIX file. We can also export uh, images, PowerPoint, PDF if you want to. We can rebind reports like detaching a data set from a report and attaching it to a, a, a different one. So we can do so many things and one of them, and we're going to be discussing that one at the end, is monitoring the tenant. So who did what and when? So for that reason, we use the REST APIs, right? So we saw that there are very fun to use, there are very useful, but how do we use them? Um, I remember that at the beginning when I saw the APIs, because I'm a Power BI developer mostly, I just scared myself. I didn't want to work with APIs at all because that is for like for developers, right? Not for us BI developers and even more for Power BI developers. So let's start easy, right? To get familiar with the APIs and then we are going we're going to move to more into programming, but not that much. So don't worry. So as I already said, there are three ways, right? Of interrogating these APIs. Let's start with the easiest one. And the easiest one is this one. So I'm going to move to the Microsoft documentation page, right? That is highly free, of course. You can come here and take a look at all the APIs available for Power BI. There are the admin APIs, and in here we can see that, for instance, we can interrogate data flows, data sets, whatever. The one that we're going to be using right now is get groups and here I have to open a parenthesis. So groups is the name for workspaces. So groups is the all workspaces name. So every single time that you see groups in the APIs, it means workspace. So we are here and we can try it. We can directly try here the APIs. We don't have to program anything. We just have to click try it, right? As easy as that. So we click try it, of course, you need to have a tenant and the tenant that I'm going to be using for this demo today is a free developer tenant, one of those that Microsoft gives you if you want to. Those are called Microsoft 365 developer, right? So you're going to be seeing my password, but no problem because this is not my tenant. So once here uh, we log in with our username and password and we can just try it. So let's say that I don't know anything. I get here. What do I have to set? Nothing at all in this case. I just hit run. And we got the worst faces, right? So this API that we are seeing, right? It gets all the worst faces that I have access to. So I'm locked in as this admin mode, right? This is the username. So I'm impersonating as admin mode and I'm added just to this workspace sales. That's it. O otherwise, I will see every single workspace that I've been had added to. So this is the easy way, <laughs> okay? But of course, I know you are wondering if we can do that in Power BI Desktop. Is that possible? Well, let's see. And for that, I already have here Power BI Desktop open. So in order to call APIs here, you need to use the web connector, not OData web connector. It is the best one. So let's do it together. So here it asks for the URL and the URL is as easy as this one. Let's zoom a little bit so you can see it. HTTPS, whatever, okay, that we also see here. All right, this is the API request. This is the, let's say the URL. So I copy and paste it. Right, and we need something more. It is very important. So if we hit advanced, we have a different kind of parameters and we need something called token because otherwise whomever 
could access to your data, right? So Power BI needs to know who is accessing through that API. And for that, we need the authorization token. This authorization token particularly is a bearer token. So as you can see here, it says bearer. So let's do the following. I'm going to copy since we already have it here. I'm going to copy this token that this page generated. And I'm going to paste it here. OK, and what I'm going to do is very important because if I I cannot hit OK, all right, so I have to tell this connector, this web connector, that this is an authorization token. So I type down authorization as easy as that. And as I just said, this is a bearer token. So we have also to type down bearer space. There is a small space. So let me zoom a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. There is a space. So we have to type down bearer space and then the token that I already copy pasted. So authorization, bearer space. The token always, always starts from EY. So that is the beginning of every single token that you will see. So let's see if that works. So we already have the URL, authorization here in the header, and the bearer token. If I hit OK, it should work. Let's see if it works. Let's wait a few seconds. It opened on my other screen. Oh my, <laughs> I was using another one. <laughs> well, but it doesn't matter. OK, I already have some queries here, but no problem. This is the, the connection directly. It is groups, so, so this is the one that we use. So if I see the advanced editor, this is the bearer token that I just copy pasted. And this is the URL, all right? So as easy as that. In the web connector, we have to copy paste the URL, authorization, bearer space, and then the token. And finally, and then we stop for questions, one tool that we are going to use today to build these APIs, it is called Postman. Postman is entirely free. You can either download it to your desktop, but you can also use it online directly in the browser. I already have Postman here. Why should we bother using Postman? Well, in this case, it's pretty easy not to use Postman because we already have the authorization token. So we don't need to create a complex API, but we're going to be doing that, okay, in a few minutes. So let's get familiar with Postman and how it works. Postman, as I said, it, what it does is create API. It helps you to create APIs in an easy way, and you can later even export it to a different programming language if you want to. Here on the right, we have this button that you can use later to export the APIs in any programming language that you want, as you can see here. So let's start building this API that we already used. So again, I'm going to paste to copy paste the URL. Are as easy as that? If I hit send, I will get an error. OK, 403 forbidden because I haven't used the authorization token so far. So to use the authorization token, we go to authorization here in Postman. And do you remember that it's a bearer token? So here in type, we have to select bearer token, all right? And we copy paste. This is another one that I was using. So we have just to copy and paste the token that we have here. So it is pretty long. Remember that it always starts from EY. OK, so this is a token. If I hit send, let's see what happens. This time everything is working fine. So status 200, OK. It means that is OK, of course. And I can see here the result, OK, what I get from the API. 
So I show you just three easy ways, okay, to get the APIs, either directly from the Microsoft page, Power BI Desktop, but also in Postman. So I'm gonna stop here for a minute to address some questions, if there are some. Ricardo, yes. are there any? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have uh, we have one. Well, the first one, just uh, for um, uh, the prosecution of the presentation, somebody asked if you can make the slides full screen. So if you come back to this, if you go back to the slides later, Absolutely. just uh, uh, just do okay, no problem. Uh, the other one is. Uh, uh, the, 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 this person is asking if uh, does he needs to do two API calls each time, so one to retrieve the token and one for the for the request. <laughs> okay, I think that the person that does that already knows <laughs> where we're where we're going. In this case, we are just calling the APIs once, right? Because we already get the token. It was like magic. We have the token, but that it's entirely correct. So the right way is to use another API that we're going to see in a, a few minutes to get the token and then use that token to call any API. So that's correct. There are two steps, but this one is the easy way, right? If we have the token, we can call any API that we want. I don't know if that makes sense. Let's see if he writes back. Otherwise, no more questions for the moment. OK, but related to that, there, there are other ways to get this token. One is here on the Microsoft page, but another one is here directly in Power BI service. And how do we do that? So it doesn't matter if you are using Google Chrome or Edge, you can hit F12. Or you can also come here to the settings to more tools, sorry, developer tools, right? Here we can get the trace of the network of the APIs, right? That this page is sending and receiving from Microsoft from Power BI. So we can see very clearly what is going on behind the scenes. So if I refresh the page, right? I can see all the APIs here, here status 200, so it is OK. And to stop recording all the traces, we have here this button also in Google Chrome, if you're using Google Chrome, right? This one next to it is just to clear, so be careful. Let's do it. So if I hit this button, it clears everything. So I have to hit record again and refresh the page and then stop. So how do we look for the token? As easy as hitting Control F, to search, and as I told you, right, every token starts from EY. So let's look for EY. And here it is, authorization. Let me zoom a little bit. So I have here the buried token, and it is the same. I can copy paste it, right? So this token impersonates this user, the admin, and this tenant, all right? So let's see if that works. Again, here. Let's use that token, hit send, and it works. So there are two ways to get the token. But as that person just asked, right, there are another way of generating the token. This is not best practice, of course. If there are no more questions, I'm going to proceed further. No, I just said you were clear. Nice. Great. So. Now we are going to finally see the demo and we are going to dive deep into how to get that token because so far it was very easy, but how do we get that token? And this is the difficult part. And this is the reason why I got so many tickets while I was in Microsoft. And for that, we're going to be using Postman, but you can do that in Power BI Desktop, no problem at all. If there is time, I will show you how to do it. So let's go to Postman again, and this time I have to I have to call two APIs. The first one to get the token. The second one is the API itself, right? To get the token, I have to call a POST API, not a GET. This one is a GET API. 
right? So let's start building that post. And it is this one, okay? But let's do it together. I'm going to copy the URL that we need and I'm going to paste it here. We'll see it together, no worries. So as I said, it is a post. So instead of get, instead of post. And this is the URL, okay? So we have at the beginning, login that Microsoft Online. This part here, this ID is the tenant ID. It can be either your name of your tenant or your tenant ID. We'll see how to get that tenant ID. It is pretty easy. Then wow to and token. Okay. So not only that, but we also need some let's say parameters, right? We have to say to Power BI, well, we are this user, right? And we have the right to get that token. So let's do it together. As, as you can see, there are four parameters. So let's start building them together. And I have them here on my notes. So the first parameter is grant type. And this grant types tells just a second, grant with a T. <laughs> uh, this grant type tells Power BI either if you are logging as an user or as a service principal. We'll see that in a few minutes. What are those? In this case, we are we are going to be logging as a service principal. So the grant type is client credentials. The other way is password. Okay, let's see the second parameter. The second parameter is source. Okay, is what we are going to be logging against. So it is always this URL, and I will zoom so you can see it better. So the resource that we are going to be logging against is analysis of window.net Power BI API. You can see it right here. And the other two parameters are client ID and client secret. But what are those? I, I, I mean, I know what this is, the resource, the grant type. Okay, I already explained, but what are those client ID and client secret? How do we get them? So to do that, we have to create something called an app. It is not like our cell phone app, all right? It is an Azure app that is entirely free that we can create and we can use as much as we want. We don't have to pay for it. It's, it's a service, yes, but it is entirely free. So let's do that. Let's create an app together to see how it is. And for that, let's go to the portal of Azure, all right, with my tenant. And to create an app is an, as easy as come, coming here to app registrations, or you can also look for that app registration. As easy as that. So in here we are in app registration and we are going to hit new registration. Let's create a new one. So I repeat, it is free, so don't worry. Let's call it uh, Power BI user group Italy. Yeah. All right, so here is asking you if you want to use it in this tenant or a different tenant. In this case, just this tenant. And this is the re uh, redirect URI if you are interested in that. I'm not. So register as easy as that. I just selected a name and I created the app. That's it. This is the app as easy as that. Do you remember that we needed some weird IDs? The first one in the URL in here. I said that this one was the tenant ID. So where do I see the tenant ID? Well, it is right here, right? We are inside the app. This is the tenant ID and this is the tenant, right? Another way, another way of getting the tenant ID is directly in Power BI. So let's close these development tools here in help about Power BI. We have 
tenant URL, all right? And at the end, we have TTID, that is your tenant ID as well. So either you can get it from directly from the app, but also here. And that one doesn't change because it is the ID of your tenant. My tenant name is this one right now, MSFT. All right, so let's start gathering those ID. And for that, I'm going to take the notepad. So I said that we need the tenant ID, the application ID, and the secret value. We need those three things. Okay, so the tenant ID, we already have it, but anyway, let's copy paste it. The application ID, that is also called the client ID, is this one. So let's copy it. And we need also the secret value. But I don't have the secret value here. Where can I get the secret value? Okay, so here on the left, we have certificates and secrets. And this is the section to create a secret value. So it is as simple as selecting here, new client secret to create a secret value. And again, any name that you want to give to, give to this client secret, let's, ca let's call it like the secret with a Z, right? Okay, let's click add and it is as easy as that. The value that we need is this one, the value, not the secret ID, the value. And it is very important that you copy directly this value into a notepad, into whatever you want, because you're gonna just get to see it once. So if you don't copy it right now, you're gonna lose it, right? So I'm going to copy it this time because otherwise I won't see it again. And these are the IDs that we need. So let's see if everything is working fine. So we already have the tenant ID. Now the client ID, that is the application ID. I don't know why they have different names, being honest with you. It's this one, the client ID, and then the client secret. That is the secret value. Let's see if it works. And it doesn't work. Why? Why is not working? Well, what is going on is that I don't have the permissions yet, the right permission, right? So in this case, I have a 400 error because I don't have the right permissions. And maybe this can be misleading because this is a, an error that is telling you something. But the real reason is that I don't have the permissions to use this API. And the permissions I are either given on Azure or in Power BI, in the admin portal of Power BI. When we use the service principle, that is the one that we are using right now, the permissions are given in the admin portal, not on Azure, on the admin portal. So let's, let's do it together. So in Power BI, as I said, in the admin portal, let's close this. There are two options that we have to allow, just two. Let's look for them. The first one is this one. Allow service principle to use Power BI APIs. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So we have to enable this option. And also this one. If, if we want to use read-only admin APIs, we also have to enable this one. So there are two, two options in the admin portal. So if I open this option, it tells me to add a security group. We don't have a security group yet. So <laughs> don't worry, after all this talking, I'm going to recap to see what we need, all right, in a diagram. So hold on, all right, we're gonna get there. So we need to create a security group. And for that, it is also entirely free, like the app. 
we can do that on Azure. So let's do that again. So instead of app registration, let's do groups. We can either select this group or directly come here and look for the group. And it is as easy as selecting here new group. As easy as that. So new group. Okay, the group type has to be security. In the admin portal, it said security group. The other type is Microsoft 365. No, we need a security group. So let's give the name SG from security group, Power BI user group, Italy. All right, and let's create it. We're gonna have to wait just like a couple of seconds and let's hit refresh. Till we see it. It is right here. Let's zoom. This is the security group. And we need to add as a member the app that we created. So let's go to member here in the security group and add that app. So the app that we created was Power BI user group. This one. So this is the security group. Yeah, the names are very similar. And this is the app that we created. Okay. So let's add the app, select. And let's hit refresh and it will appear. Okay, here we are. So this security group, SDP, Power BI user group, it, Italy, is the one that we need to add here. Okay, so let's do it together. Security group. Here it is. This is the security group that we need to add. All right. Inside, there is the app. So apply. And then also here, right? So I, I said that there are two options. So the first one is this one, right? allow service principle to use Power BI APIs. And the second one is if we want to use the admin API. So apply. And now we finally have the permission. Let's see if it works. So if I come back here and I hit send, I did a mistake and this is a very general mistake. So I said that we need the parameters, right? And I added the parameters here in parameters, but we need to add the parameters in the body. So my bad. Let's just copy paste really quick. So in body, I always select this one. Okay. Form URL encoded because it is easier. So I'm going just to copy paste the parameters, my bad. Well, actually, I'm happy that that happened. So you can see that these parameters are added in the body, okay? Not in parameters. So let's do it really quick. Resource. Client ID. Client secret. And the, para the IDs. Okay, so let's disable these parameters. So let's see if that works. If I hit send, now we finally have the access token. So it worked, right? We have finally the token, the token that we can use in the other APIs, right? So let's copy the tokens to see if it is working. So let's paste it in the same API that we used like 10 minutes ago to see if it works. Control V, send, and we don't see any workspace here, but it works, right? Why we don't see any workspace here? Because the app hasn't been added yet to any workspace. So let's add the app to the workspace to see if we see actually see the workspace. So the workspace is sales. So as, as any user, we have to update 
up here. So let's add the app here. We can see here the app close. I like to uh, refresh just because maybe it is better to refresh the page. Um, let's generate the token again. We can generate the token as much as we can. Uh, so uh, let's use the token and let's see if we can see now sales and we see sales because the app has been added to the workspace sales, right? If we add the app to another workspace, we're going to see different workspaces. So let's recap and then I will stop for questions. All right, so I know it looks very complicated. Let's enter the presentation mode. OK, I know it looks very, very, very complex and maybe at the beginning it is. Why? Because in the first demo, we just had the authorization token, right? And in this case, that is actually best practice. We need to generate the token. To generate the token, we use something called a service principle. The app that we created in Azure, it is also called service principle. So from the app, we need the tenant ID, right? The app ID and the secret value. I repeat, you're going to get to see the secret value just one time. So please copy and paste that value into any notepad or whatever tool you prefer. Once we have the app and those three IDs, we need the security group. We need the security group because we have to add the security group in the Power BI admin portal. Where? Well, in these two options, allow service principles to use Power BI APIs. And if you want to use read-only admin APIs, you can also add the security group there. With that, with the right permissions, we can get the authorization token that we can use in another API, as easy as that. So there are these three steps. It looks complex, but once you do it one, twice, it is not that complex. So I gotta stop here to see if there are any questions. Yes, there's a couple of questions. The first one uh, is, uh, I don't know if we will be the next topic, but what is the real limit, uh, the real limit number of tokens for embedded tokens? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I think the limit is 200, but I'm not sure. Maybe it change. I'm, uh, I'm sure that is in the documentation of Microsoft. So if you go to the API page, I'm very sure that in limitations at the end, you will see it, but I, I don't have the number in mind. I'm so sorry. Cool. OK. Um, and then another uh, user is asking, uh, is there a more general question? Is there an admin API that tells you if a user's extracted data from a report? My scenario is to audit extract data from the report. I want to track it, but uh, without disabling the extract data feature. OK, so we have some activity events APIs and we are going to take a look at them, but there is something really great coming in the future. Right, so if you can wait to March, right, you will get a very nice tool to keep track of everything what is going on on your tenant. And we will see that at the end of this session. Okay. And then the la last uh, is a comment from uh, Alessandro who says, not me, another Alessandro <laughs> who, who is commenting, uh, you can generate another secret value every time you want if you don't save the first one. Exactly, that's entirely correct. So in here, I forgot to tell it, but that is entirely correct. Let's go to the app again, to the Power BI user group app. Uh, in client secret, you can create a new one. That's entirely correct. If you lost, you can see that I don't see the value and I cannot copy it, I lost it. So if I lost it, I can create a new one. That's correct. Okay. Any other question? Yes, uh, a few. Uh, okay, one, uh, the, the, probably the same person that asked the other question is uh, sounds interesting, I'll wait uh, March. 
So he was commenting. Uh, we'll see the... it right now in uh, 10 minutes or so. OK, so you see Power BI as a group Italy. You don't have to wait <laughs> even for Microsoft. <laughs> we arrived before. Uh, and then there are a few other questions, so let me just go uh, one by one. Um, sure. Marco is commenting uh, and asking, uh, implementing the same flow in Power Query, is there a way uh, not to leave the service principle secret uh, unencrypted? You can use the vault secret, right? That is uh, a service in Azure, right? But uh, I wanted to keep this uh, webinar very simple. I know it is not best practice at all to copy and paste your secret, your application, and, the, and that is entirely correct. You can use the Azure Vault. All right, and then uh, um, uh, Alessandro again uh, is saying you can use an API to know the percentage of tokens you've already used. I didn't know that. Good to know. Well, maybe if you can paste the documentation in the chat, it will be really helpful for all of us. Thank you. Yeah. I don't think it's a question. I think it's uh, he's affirming this. So <laughs> uh, probably even better be to, to provide the, the, the documentation. We all um, another question is. Uh, no, this one I already. Well, maybe we can uh, follow with the other ones with the other slides, right? Yeah, and sure. Stop then, again. Uh, OK, no problem. Okay. Go ahead. So the other way, the old way of getting the token, so let's just hit the presentation mode, was with a master user, right? Then in 2019, in came service principle. There are pros and cons, and one of those cons is that we cannot use all the APIs, mostly the admin APIs with the service principle. So if I go to this documentation, that uh, Ricardo, I'm going to paste in the chat. Maybe it is useful for all the all the people that is attending this session. We can see all the admin APIs that we can use. We can call with the service principle. So we have either the service principle or the master user, right? And master user is the old way. It is not best practice anymore. And I'm, I'm going to show you why. So the master user, it is a little bit different compared to the service principle. I already have here. Sadly, I have no time to uh, go through it. But I will show you what are the differences between service principle and this master user account. So to get the token, we have to first do a post API, not a get API. Uh, I, I get a post call API, and this is the URL that we use. As you can see here, we have common. We don't have the tenant ID, right? So if you see this URL, right, with common, you already know that you are not using the service principle. You are using the master account. And the other big, big difference between this master user account and the service principle is that, as, as you can see here in the body, we have, yes, the grant type, like in the service principle, the resource, the client ID, but we also have the username and the password. And as I told you, you can see my password, no problem, because this is a developer tenant, no problem at all. And this is one of the risks that we have to type down the username and the password. And this API is going to impersonate this admin all right, it will get the token, yes, right? But it is not best practice for that reason. And for the master user, another big difference is that we don't give the permissions in the admin portal. We give the permissions in Azure, all right? So for service principle, we, we give the permissions in the Power BI admin portal. For the master user, we give the permissions in Azure. That is the big difference. And that's why the APIs fail so many times. Because people, and I totally understand because this is mixed up, people tend to mix up the service principle with the master user account. This is the main reason. And I'm going to stop here, address one question, and then come back to the activity events. 
All right. Um, okay, so one question. Uh, if I create a group uh, workspace uh, by APD slash uh, secret value, I can't, cha I can't uh, change data source credentials. Uh, is it uh, true? I think he's asking. To change the credential of a user? Yes, if you uh, if you create it, if you create a workspace uh, by APD secret value, then you can create you can't change the data source credentials. I think this is what uh, the question is implying. No, I don't understand. So if someone create a workspace. He's saying right Yeah. with the app ID. OK, and then the data source. Uh, maybe uh, yeah, by APD slash secret value. I cannot change the data source credentials. This is the, the, the question. If you if you, if you don't understand it, it's OK. We just ask the user. To, no, I'm sorry. Maybe, I don't understand. Maybe try okay, to so let's it go to understand. the activity events. All right, and then at the end, address all the questions. OK, so one year ago, I was here in the Power BI user group Italy because with Alessandro, we built together a monitoring of the tenant ID where we used to work in Motor K. It was the company. And this API, the activity events that you can see right here, it is very complex. It is tricky. Why? Because here I put in red the timestamp that we need to use. And we can call the API just in the same day. So in here, I'm calling the API for the 3rd of January, right? And I cannot call it until, I don't know, 30th of January. It has to be the same date. And for every single hour, all right, we get an answer. So let's, let's do it together to see what is going on in here. Maybe I will show you really fast. So, um, I already have the token here from my client, uh, from my service principal. Um, let's copy it and use that API, the monitoring, the activity events. Here it is, the activity events. Okay, this is the timestamp, the end and the start. And let's do it for yesterday. So yesterday was 25th from 19, so 7 p.m. to 20 p.m. to 20 to 8 p.m. All right, and the authorization token, I already got it. But not working, nice. Demo time. So it doesn't work. Where was it? Here. 25th. I think there is a problem, yes, with the... Ah, because the, the start is yeah. the last one. <laughs> yes. All right, perfect. Uh, yes, oh my one. God. Yes. All right, and I get all the events. So here I can see who did what and when with the activities. But if I go even further from 19 to, I don't know, 20, 11 p.m., let's say, we have four hours. So for every hour at the end, you see that it is very long. At the end, I have a continuation token. Right, so the idea is to use this API and call it again to get the next hour of results and then to call it again and call it again. OK, so it is a loop until it ends. So in a day, you can call it 24 times. So it is a pain and you can do this in Power BI so if you are interested. And for that, Ricardo uh, will paste a link that I totally recommend from YouTube and that is from the channel BI Elite that show you how to do it, how to call this activity events API in Power BI Desktop, but this is a pain, okay? And for that, 
I have something really good that is coming in the future in just two months if you are very interested in the activity events to see what is going on in your tenant. And it is this one. Let me show you. So it's going to be in public preview in March. So let's see it together. In theory, we're going to get to see tenant wide historical data sets in theory, all right, of usage of your Power BI solution. So you won't have to deal with the activity events in theory. So from March, hang on there. Uh, I don't know, it was Alessandro the one that was, that was asking. Uh, so this is the link. If you are interested, I'm going to paste it in the chat. And that is what is uh, waiting for us in the future. And uh, that's pretty much it. So. Now you are a superhero in service principles. You know that the permissions are given in the Power BI admin, uh, Power BI admin portal, and not in Azure. That is the difference. Okay, if you if you can bring something today, please be that. So for service principles, the permissions are given in the admin portal of Power BI, not in Azure. That's pretty much it. So let's address the questions. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So Alessandro wrote that uh, uh, his colleague has the code of the API to retrieve the percentage of usage uh, used tokens, and uh, he'll send it tomorrow um, to you. So probably by LinkedIn or uh, or something, <laughs> or probably to the user group, so we can share with everyone uh, nice. as he prefers. Um, so this topic I think we, we covered. Uh, for the question of the audit extract data, you said something is coming in March. Uh, we'll see if, uh, if it can answer that kind of need. Uh, the last one was the question from, uh, uh, from, from Pasquale, uh, who asked, uh, again, let's say again, if, if I create a group, uh, workspace, uh, by APD secret value, I can change the data source credentials. And he added, for example, to connect to SharePoint list. I don't understand because the data source is set for a report, not for a workspace. That's why maybe I'm not getting right the question. Because I'm thinking about the data source of a report, not of a workspace. So my bad, I'm, I'm not understanding. So maybe if we can move to another one. No problem. Uh, I think there are no more. Um, so. Yeah. If uh, okay. there are uh, no more questions, maybe we can wait 20 seconds. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think we can uh, close the webinar. Thank Victor for uh, for coming, for coming to share uh, to share his knowledge. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the buying time again, if you if you haven't <laughs> if you haven't guessed it, to see if there's the question. But uh, um, at the beginning, uh, we, as we said, uh, Victor is a is a friend, a member of the community, and he can uh, uh, and he came here to to share his knowledge, the knowledge he gained through his work, through his study. So we hope this is also encouraging to everyone that is following. Uh, and uh, through the question, it's clear that there are a few people that uh, definitely have knowledge on the topic and uh, other topics to come and do as uh, as Victor did and share. Uh, with the with the community. So thanks again, Victor. If, uh, if you don't have anything to add, if Ricardo doesn't have anything to add, if the community doesn't have any more questions, I think we can all go to have uh, a nice dinner and see you on the on the 16th with uh, Matthias uh, uh, session on uh, Power BI uh, Data Mars. Very interesting session, so don't miss it. OK. Cool. Bye everyone. Cool. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Bye.